This.net file executes a calculator if you run it normally. But as soon as you put it into tnspy, the decompiled code will not show any calc.exe execution. And if you debug in the nspy, it will also not pop a calculator. So how does that work? There are no anti-debug checks in this sample. Instead, it uses a technique called ready to run stomping. In today's video, I will show you how to create such a file and afterwards we will explore how to analyze it as a Mavi analyst. This technique was first published by Jizzy uh, Checkpoint Research at Virus Bulletin 23. And by now they also have published this on their blog and I will link the blog article in the description below. To fully understand this technique, we need to understand what ready to run compilation actually is. And this is a performance improvement feature for .NET Core executables. It allows the .NET applications to have better startup times. The way they do this is they compile the IL code to native code and they ship both at the same time, the native code and the IL code. And now when the .NET application is executed, while the application loads, the compiler, just-in-time compiler, will choose to execute the native code preferably instead of the IL code. Because this way the startup performance is way better and the application is faster. It has um, the disadvantage that the binary is larger um, also it says here because of course you need to contain both IL code and native code. Yeah, but that is the trade-off for better performance. So how do we use this now to hide our real intentions from the IL code view in the NSPY? So let's first start by creating a new Visual Studio project. So we say create new project, we choose console app for C sharp and let's name it just thumping. .NET 6.0 is the framework we are going to use and we say create. So now we got our project and we are going to add some more lines of code here. To compile this project, open view terminal and then you should have this terminal window here. And now we create an then ready to run application. Do that with .NET publish Now for showcasing the not self-contained executable is a little bit easier to analyze, but I'm going to show you the self-contained executable as well later. So now this is the folder where our files were published to. So every file that's in there, I'm going to put on my Mavalab VM and then we're going to check it out. If you want to learn Mav analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners. So these are all of the files you're going to find in that folder. Make sure you copy all of them. Um, as I said, it's not a single file executable. So if you like, if you are like me and you transfer this to a, another machine, want to execute it, make sure you install the runtime environment for .NET Core six so for dotnet six right um then you should be able to run it so if we execute this now we see it's popping a calculator and it's telling us hello world so you could imagine this being like the malware that is being executed and this is like the hello world um 
the, the legit application decoy uh, in this file. So let's take a look at it with the nspy. We now still have to create this um, stomped file out of it. And the way such a .NET Core application works is you have the actual .NET metadata in this DLL, and the exe is the one reading the configuration for the runtime and then executing our DLL file. So the DLL file is actually the one containing the main code of our application. So that's what we need to check here. What you also see here is that the um, now we entered code that more looked like a script, like we have no class and no namespace and no method in there, but it's just syntactic sugar. So internally, it's still creating this class program with the main function here using this name to indicate that it's uh, generated. So that's how we find our code, right? And we see here, this is the line we want to hide because it's starting our malware code. And this is the line that is our decoy code. So let's try this. So you can right click here and say edit IL instructions. And then we can change the lines that belong to our call into knobs so that the pretense is that this line isn't there. Why is it three lines here? Because this loads the string calc. This is loads basically the argument for our process start call. Then there's the process start call, and then it uh, pops the result of this call. So let's knock this. Press OK. And now you also have to save this. And now here is the trick is a little bit that you need to preserve most of the metadata. Make sure that here's a check mark on mixed mode module. And if you go to the writer option, make place check marks everywhere so that everything's preserved that can be preserved. So we make as little changes as possible. So that should be everything we need to do. And then we say, okay, and the module is saved. Now we have to verify that it is working as intended. First, let's try to debug it in here and make sure it's not executing the um, CARC exe. So we place breakpoint here, we say start. Now you need to make sure to choose the right options because this is not .NET Framework, but .NET Core. So we choose .NET. And we have a host executable. The host executable is the exe file, this one. And the actual executable is our DLL. And that should be it. Let's press OK. And now we are here and we step through. Now it's asking for the key and that's it. So um, it's working as expected. There was no calculator being popped. And we see here when we check this code or if we check the IL code, there is also no process calc, process start calc exe call anymore. So the question is, what happens though if we execute it here? It's popping our calculator. So this is a really, really cool thing because now you have a way to hide code that doesn't even show if you debug the files. Now the question is how can we as reverse engineers identify such a stumped code.net executable? And the way you can do this is you need to use another tool than the NSPY because the NSPY does not support RTR headers or 
examination of the disassembled instructions. But one thing you should probably check, even if you mainly work with DN Spy, is when you put this in here and look into the PE core header, you will see there is a managed native header. So this has a value. And what does this mean? This means there is some native code being executed. And for that reason alone, you should, as a reverse engineer, be immediately alarmed that there's something else that might be executed because you have some native code being referenced. This is a so-called mixed mode assembly. So mixed mode assembly means we have both. We have native and IL code, and you cannot just rely on the IL code anyways. So one tool that can see the headers is .peak. So if we open this here, you can see we have a header in the metadata that says, here it is, ready to run header. And there is some other thing that you might notice in the hex editor, because I always used to scroll a little bit through the file, especially if they are small. What you see here is RTR, and that means you have a ready to run header, because this is the ASCII encoding for RTR is the signature used for the ready to run header, so that it can verify that this is the correct um, structure being parsed here. So this is the signature, right? Um, and you know the rest is going to be part of this ready to run header. And what it does, it tells the system where you, that finds the native functions. So here you can find information about that. So now we know how to determine if a file is using ready to run, but that doesn't mean we know if it's stomped. And for that, the best tool of choice recommended also by the article is ILSpy. So let's quickly navigate to our main method. So that's the main method we see here. All right, um, no cuck, exe popping. And the cool thing is here you can change your view to a different view. So this is, remember this is the IL code and you can say right click, decompile to a new tab. And we are gonna place this side by side. And instead of IL, we are gonna choose ready to run. And then it shows us the disassembly of the ready to run native code. So. And this way you have a side-by-side -side comparison of this code and this code. And you can see here, oh, there is something happening that is not happening here. So this is how you detect the stomping manually. I'm pretty sure at some point there will be some tools that have some sort of um, automatic detection of that. But for now, we're going to live with that. So with Visual Studio, with our original command, we created a file that is not self-contained and that relies on the installation of the .NET Core runtime on the system. But I imagine if Mavis is going to use this, that it will rather try to use single file executables that are self-contained. And for that reason, I'm going to show you this as well. So. I'm going to check self-contained to true. And also we will add the single file executable. And once we have done this, our publish folder will only contain two files. One is an exe file and one is a PDB file. So here's our exe file. And again, you may run into some problems when trying to open this in the end spy. 
Why? Because this is actually not a .NET executable, but a native file. And what you may notice if you check this file in a debugger is you see the debug path is something like that one here. So it says core host static single file host. And this should tip you off that this is a single file executable. And then you, when you check below, so there are a ton of PE files appended to this. And again, ILSPY is of help here because ILSPY is able to extract for us the files from the single file host. So the way this works is you have a native application that is the, let's say, the, the execution step that then contains all of the necessary .NET runtime environment DLLs. And if you check the properties, this is a rather large file with all of the, with the whole .NET runtime inside and also with our DLL file. And ISBY is able to see this. So if you open it here, now you can see here the runtime configuration and you can find here our .NET Core app file. And you can analyze it as usual. So generally you would probably start with C-sharp. So you can analyze it as usual um, and check here and then compare this with the ready to run code. So I did not stomp this file yet, but um, but um, analysis is actually straightforward. Just if you just identify that this is a single file host execute well, Got to open it in ISPy and it's fine. But what are the implications of ready to run stomping? Does it affect antivirus detection signatures, for instance? Well, I believe in most cases it shouldn't, um, especially behavioral detection will not be affected at all. Um, there is a specific case where it might affect um, pattern signatures that are on the IL code. So pattern signatures can be on every part of the file. So they could be on the version information, on method names, on reference strings. Such cases should not be affected. But if they are particularly on the IL code that you stomped, then this part will be affected. But then, I mean, they can be placed instead on the native code. So in general, the effect shouldn't be large. Um, it, might only affect like single instances of that. But what will probably happen is analysts who are not um, aware of this technique and who do not have enough time to form a verdict. So who have like some time limits on the, on the analysis time they are allowed to spend on a sample. They would tend to skip um, approaching the analysis holistically. What does it mean? Um, usually, if you do it right, if you have enough time, you um, gather different sources of information. You do not rely on one source of information, like the NSPY decompilation, for instance. You will always also check some sandbox reports, um, check, monitor the sample if it's not being debugged. And in, in these cases, you will see that something else is going on that is not visible in the NSPY. Um, yeah, but many environments are kind of stressful. So it can happen that you miss the malicious code and then put a wrong verdict on the file. But that's actually all of the implications that I see right now. I hope to see you around. And if you have any questions, please put them below. Cheers.